Hello ladies and gentlemen, people of the internet, welcome back to another video. So over the past three-ish months, I have been reading for an English project. I know, shocker. So when I got this rubric, I knew I wanted to create a video for all of my lovely viewers who are subscribed to the channel. And not because I wanted more creative freedom with the presentation. So Mr. Teacher, I obviously can't say your name because this is the internet, and all my classmates watching, this is my book review. So what have I been reading, I hear you ask through the screen. Ow, you guys are hurting my- Well, I have been reading the Let the Sky Fall. Series. Look, look, I, I know I was supposed to just be about a book, but the three just follow the same story, just with minor time skips in between, that they pretty much just act as like three parts of the same book. But, it, but if you want more proof, it's one book. Anyway, this fiction book, written by Shannon Messenger and written for young adults, which according to Google, I am, is so goddamn good. So good, in fact, that I can still see all of the key moments playing in the back of my head. That good. So good, in fact, I don't even know where to start this. Vane Weston should be dead, but he's not. I mean, I mean his parents died a gruesome death by a tree through the heart, so naturally, I would assume that as a seven-year-old boy, he'd be nothing more than a paint splatter on the ground. But he survived, without a scratch. Then there's Audra, smoking hot apparently. And she lives in Vane's dreams. Why are we still here? But also, as well as the sky. She's a sylph. Sylphs can call drafts of the wind and command it to do what they want. It, if they choose they want to listen. But more, more on that later. Audra is Vane's guardian until he becomes old enough to realize he's a sylph in which Audra will train him in the arts of the wind to eventually take down the power-hungry, wind-shattering tyrant who is killing their people. Now that's an interesting synopsis, huh? But wait, there's more. Vane is also the last of his people, and by people, I mean westerly people. The wind is split into four types, northerlies, easterlies, southerlies, and westerlies. If you ever get confused, just look at a compass and stick earlies next to each of the cardinal directions. North winds are naturally aggressive and dominant, East winds are stealthy, fast, and do whatever it takes to survive. South winds are soft and warm and tend to make you loopy. And west winds are peaceful. The traits of each wind are reflected in each character's heritage, like how Vane, a westerly if you couldn't tell and if you forgot what I just said, gets physically sick whenever he sees the tiniest, just tiniest bit of blood. The winds also get stronger as you combine them, such as all four combined become super powerful, which is what our bad guy wants and why Vane needs to defeat him. 1192 page story short and skipping a lot of details, Audra shows Vane what she has to offer. Oh yeah. Hey, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about the wind. Get your mind out of the gutter. They only allude to that. Although I really wouldn't mind. They train while internal monologuing on, on the other person's figures. I mean, figures who wouldn't want to when looking at either a jack dude or a badass sexy woman. They fight some bad guys before making out. I mean, figures, but I mean, who wouldn't want to with a dead guy in front of you? Then Audra leaves to go work on herself. Fig oh, oh, okay. I'll, I'll stop on that bit now. On this journey, she finds the enemy's new weapon while Vane trains with the other sylphs until he can eventually meet up again, only to lose to the next battle when it breaks out. Audra gets captured. Vane goes to save her. He's successful. Yada, yada. They make out again, but this time with an audience, i.e. you, you dirty, dirty reader. Yada, yada. They kill the bad guy. It's a happy ending figures. But wait, if I haven't already convinced you to read this book yet, this is the part where we actually get to the interesting stuff. Okay, so now that I essentially gave you the outline of what this multi-part book goes, you might be wondering, why do I need to read this book now if you just told me the story? No! This book is full of surprises. Remember when I was talking about the wind-shattering tyrant? Yeah, I hope you do, because this bad guy found a whole nother power by stripping the wind of its choice. Yeah, remember when I said, if they choose, they want to listen, right? Yep, it's coming full circle, just like an Alabama kid's family tree. This basically strips the wind of its choice, but the power is like a drug. Once you use it, you can't stop using it. Eventually, you use it so much, it just consumes you until you become absolutely corrupted. Unless... Ha! Psych! I'm not telling you anything else about that, because I'm forcing you to read all three parts of this book just to find out if I'm lying to you or not. And that was just a little surprise from the book. Just wait until you find out about Audra's mommy issues. At least she didn't grow up in Alabama, otherwise it could have been daughter issues. 
Also, all of the quote-unquote side characters that have names have some major purpose to the plot. Like this one guy, just called Oz, who is marked as a traitor of the bad guy's army, but still knows this corrupting power I was just talking about. That quote was on page 43 of the second part, uh, just if you wanted to know. And throughout the story, you can just see this guy using this power more and more frequently, which you can see slowly degrading him over the course of time. But then at some point, he goes and teaches this power to a whole bunch of other people. Like, dude is actively ruining his life. And then, like a bad friend, he goes and destroys other people's lives. I'm pretty sure. <sighs> you, see, you see, we don't get a lot of accounts what it's like to live with prolonged exposure to this power. Well, except for one, but he's like hyper important to the story and quote unquote redeemed at the end, so he doesn't really count. I'm just saying it would be nice to know what this power was really like to live with, so it would just give you more of a reason to hate it seeing being used. But one thing I would have liked to see more of though is medicine. You see, sylphs are allergic to medicine. Thankfully, it doesn't kill them, and if it did, Vane would have already been dead, and this would have been a short book, but it essentially incapacitates them. This would be a great weakness to exploit in battle, which there are many battles in this book, but it's only utilized once, so it's, it's whatever. If you couldn't tell already, I loved this book. It was great at storytelling, all of the characters were interesting, comedic relief was well-timed when it was actually needed, and I'll admit it, the romance actually had a significant point to the plot. Like, actually, no joke. At least Vane and Alger aren't related, because that would bring a whole new light onto the situation. The visual description was also great. Like in the beginning when I was talking about still seeing the action, I'm willing to bet that it would make a great episodic structured show. I'm just putting that out there. I don't know how to make shows and couldn't even find one about it. Read it. If you're not into that romance stuff, just push through it, and it's well worth it. Read it, 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 read it. Read it, 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 right now. That was amazingly timed.